Good morning and welcome to this public meeting of the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission. We have one item on our agenda this morning, a decisional matter on the fiscal year 2018 mid-year review and proposed operating plan adjustments. We have three staff members with us this morning in case there are any questions during this opening round. The CPSC staff members who are briefing, uh, Mr. Dwayne Ray, Deputy Executive Director for Safety Operations, Ms. Monica Summit, Deputy Executive Director, Operations Support, and Mr. Jay Hoffman, Director of our Office of Financial Management. Good morning and thank you all for being here. We will begin uh, with a round of questions from the Commissioner. Commissioners, each commissioner will have five minutes for questions and we can go multiple rounds if necessary. Um, I will begin with myself, but I do not have any questions. Commissioner Adler? No questions, thank you. Commissioner Robinson? No questions, thank you. Commissioner Kay? Uh, I only had one question and I was going to direct it at Mr. Ray. And of course, if anyone else wants to jump in, feel free. Uh, you know, Mr. Ray, we spent a number of years trying to encourage staff to think outside the box and to come up with even more robust safety projects to propose to the Commission. And I can imagine it's human nature that when you propose something, you hope that it's just adopted whole cloth. And of course, being having different people sitting here than are proposing the projects, that's just not always going to happen. And so in the event that that does not happen, and my guess is it won't happen in this particular instance, that it'll be adopted exactly as proposed. My question is, how do we keep staff motivated? Because we do very much appreciate, and even more than appreciation, we need, and the public needs to have staff to continue to think through these issues and to be very creative and to be very robust in their safety thinking and to propose these projects. So how on a going forward basis do we continue to keep them encouraged to do that, but also recognizing that it just may not ever, it may not always go the way they want it to go? Uh, sure, thanks, thanks for the question. Um, you know, I, I can uh, tell you we um, understand that um, a agreed upon list that's vetted through um, the career staff and served up to the commission may not resonate with um, with everyone at that level, and uh, and the priorities and orders uh, shift as as is rightly okay. Um, you uh, ultimately this body gets to make those decisions. So I think, um, you know, we understand that going into it, and I think um, nothing in any of this would discourage our, you know, our ongoing uh, uh, process that we try to encourage and, and get uh, good projects to execute and serve up for the Commission's consideration. So I, I, I think that process will still uh, carry out. Great. Thank you. I don't know Ms. Summit or Mr. Hoffman if you want to add anything. No? Okay. Thanks. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh I'll just go around once again. Commissioner Adler, Commissioner Robinson, any questions? Okay. So now we will turn, oh, excuse me, the staff is excused. Thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for all the. We are now going to turn to the FY 2018 mid year review and proposed operating plan adjustments as proposed by staff and then any amendments to the proposal. I will begin by offering a manager's amendment, and for the sake of convenience, each commissioner has combined multiple amendments into this manager's amendment. Before I call for a second, I will ask each commissioner to take up to three minutes to introduce their portion of the amendment. Commissioner Adler. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. And I actually have two uh, amendments. Uh, the first is with respect to adding uh, a magnet set market assessment. The purpose of this amendment is to authorize funding up to $100,000 for a marketplace survey, primarily of the Internet, to determine the number of firms offering to sell high power magnet sets to American consumers and to purchase and test a meaningful sample of such sets to determine whether they meet the definition of a high power magnet set as defined in the Commission's September 4, 2012 Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. As part of this project, staff shall monitor on an ongoing basis injuries and fatalities to young children who have swallowed high power magnets and shall conduct IDIs on an ongoing basis to determine, and these are things they are going to do anyway, uh, the age of the child when the magnets were ingested, how and when the magnet ingestion was discovered, and the harm to the child. I note that my amendment authorizes the expenditure of funds to do this project, but it doesn't require uh, staff 
to spend money on a contract, nor does it require, and this is important, any approval under the Paperwork Reduction Act because it's going to derive its information from the Internet and not from a survey sent either to consumers or to magnet set sellers. So if staff wants to do it in-house, that's perfectly fine, but there are $100,000 dedicated to do this. But I have to add one word why this work needs to be done. And I put this squarely on the Tenth Circuit and its deeply disappointing ruling in the Zen Magnet case. A major part of the Court's decision rested on its argument that the Commission failed to include in its assessment of the benefits of the proposed rule the fact that injuries had recently dropped because our enforcement actions against magnet sa sellers and our enforcement of the magnet provisions of F963. The Court said we needed to explain that. With all due respect to the Court, anyone who knows how markets operate, and they certainly do, would understand that the minute the Court invalidated the magnet rule, and to me this is so obvious it goes without saying, the market would bring back all the past and all the wannabe sellers into the market where it was before the Court took action. So unsurprisingly, we now know that uh, we have ended up exactly where the court should have realized we would end up as a result of its ruling. Anyway, if we're to move forward in protecting the public from the hazards of high power magnets, I see no alternative but to gather the necessary uh, data to demonstrate to the court and anyone else who would buy its reasoning that we are now back in a world where young kids are at risk from a hazard that by all rights should have been disposed of years ago. So that's my magnet set amendment. And may I now I discuss my next amendment? You may. Okay. Uh, this uh, is with respect to new technology investigation via challenge.gov. Uh, and this goes to the point that Commissioner Kay was making that we don't always buy what the staff uh, suggests, but we are incredibly sensitive to it. This amendment would set aside $50,000 for projects via challenge.gov. Uh, and this is a change from the original staff proposal to dedicate $300,000 to identify technical solutions to reduce access to swimming pool, pools and to detect children in potential danger by challenge.gov. What this amendment does is to separate the very worthy project of seeking technical solutions to drowning from the equally worthy project of using challenge.gov. Under my proposal, subject to the approval of the Office of General Counsel and the Office of the Executive Director and in consultation with the Office of Communication as appropriate, the Office of Hazard Identification and Reduction will identify candidates for funding through challenge.gov uh, and will develop challenge.gov templates, publicize contests and fund awards for what I hope would be at least two critical safety issues. Uh, this limits the amount uh, allocated to prize money, uh, or this sets the limit at, to 90 percent, meaning we should have very low overhead for the project. Um, we've t undertaken projects in the past through challenge.gov. I love the idea of asking the public to help us to promote safety while getting some prize money in the process. But I want to return to the staff's proposal for identifying technological uh, solutions to prevent drowning. I would not want my amendment to be taken in any way as a rejection of staff's idea. To the contrary, I hope they'll f flesh out this proposal and offer it to the Commission in the near future, hopefully in our next stop plan. It's a worthy project, and I will support it if brought to us for a decision. But I don't want to do it in the context of challenge.gov. If you want to explore the use of advanced sensors, for example, as a way of reducing drowning, I think it should be done as a separate project. But if you want to use challenge.gov to reduce drowning, you should ask it in a broader, uh, more general fashion, uh, whether through sensors or through any technology to meet your goal. So again, I thank the staff for their work, and uh, this, I hope, explains why I depart from their proposal. Thank you, Commissioner Adler. Are there any other amendments you, or portions of the amendment you wish to introduce? Thank you. Commissioner Robinson. Thank you. It will come as a surprise to no one that my two amendments have to do with data. Um, that's been a focus of my staff. 
and mine um, since uh, I became a commissioner. And I've consistently worked to improve CPSC's data collection, analysis, and sharing, including advancing projects to improve NICE, develop APIs for our data sets, and update our websites. My staff and I have worked very hard to spread the word about saferproducts.gov and increase reporting by consumers, medical professionals, lawyers, and others. And even we were even able to get the child death review panels to add a data field that would allow automatic reporting of product-related child deaths to saferproducts.gov. I'm very proud of the work that the CPSC staff has done on this. My fellow commissioners and my staff and I have done over the last several years to improve our data. Um, my First Amendment is with respect to Project 7, Urgent Care. Um, I, I've spoken about this frequently enough that I'll just address this briefly. While NICE obviously has critically important information, it all comes from emergency departments at hospital. Being from Michigan, I know that urgent care facilities have be become absolutely ubiquitous and, and that in, certainly in that part of the country and in other parts of the country. And sometimes they, they really are the only option for many people for seeking immediate medical attention. Um, so I was gratified that this topic was also part of the operating plan. My understanding is we're just barely beginning the work on that. And I've told uh, George Borlase that I would be happy to share the enormous amount of effort that my office has put in on that. And I think that we're going to be able to help them um, to, to get a little bit of a jump start on putting this together. But that's my first uh, amendment. And the second one has to do with saferproducts.gov. Um, it's Project 8. Saferproducts.gov is a hugely important tool um, to the CPSC in gathering data on product-related incidents and to provide consumers, industry, researchers, advocates, and other stakeholders information about incidents related to products. I know that this was hugely controversial at the time of the CPSIA, but I think that it is widely recognized as being very beneficial to the agency. It took a long time to become user-friendly, but it hasn't been updated since it was launched almost eight years ago, and that's an eternity on the Internet. As both internal CPSC users and external users have noted, the web website needs significant enhancement and modernization. So the project described in the amended op plan, which is, which is my amendment to this, will get a process started to achieve that such modernization. EXIT will confer with internal and external users to gather information on what needs to be done to the website, addressing at the very least user experience, including mobile friendliness, integration with internal CPSC systems and review of data fields. I know this is a big project, but I'm certain that the improvements will significantly benefit the CPSC, consumers, and the companies that are dedicated to product safety. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Robinson, are there any other portions of the amendment you have wish to offer? No. Thank you. Commissioner Kay. Thanks, Madam Chair. And I'll just briefly describe some of our contributions. They focus primarily on persistent hazards. Uh, I was pleased that our contributions involved moving the portable generator work up to try to get the staff additional funds to finish off its evaluation of the two current voluntary standards. Also, importantly, to focus the tip over work on that that we believe is absolutely essential to move the rulemaking along, including language that stated that nothing in the project should in any way delay the implement or the uh, promulgation of the notice of proposed rulemaking by the end of the fiscal year. And then also moving up ATV work, it's critical, as we've seen, both in tip overs and even more in portable generators, usually when there's a breakthrough in one of these issues getting solved, it's when the staff is able to research these issues and be given a set of money to come up with design solutions that work. We saw that with portable generators. We're seeing that in other areas. And I think it's imperative that the commission get funded to support that research and use whatever we have to support the ATV research that the staff is doing. So I was pleased that that got included as well. There were a couple of areas where we disagreed respectfully with the staff's suggestions, and invo mostly involving focus groups. I drew heavily on the expertise in my office and Dr. Jonathan Midget, a human factors expert, to note that focus groups have a role to play, perhaps more on marketing, but not necessarily on the safety work that we're doing, and so those were de-emphasized. Similarly, while the uh, NCARES proposal I thought was an excellent proposal by staff as a starting point, there were additional areas where we thought that there were higher priorities. It was less of a statement about NCARES and more of a, of a statement about what we need to continue to fund. 
And it was also important to note that uh, some of the other projects that are lower on the list need attention, like the infant and toddler measurement project. That may seem like it's not anything that really is worth paying attention to, but that's the type of work that underlies a lot of the other work that we do. If you let that slide and you don't fund that and that becomes antiquated, then we don't have the scientific basis, or at least the current scientific basis, to build other rulemakings and other voluntary standards and other decisions out of that. So those are some of the core things that we need to keep funding, and I was glad to see that that has a chance to get either funded in part or funded in whole. So thank you to the chairman and to the other offices that we were able to work together to come up with one unified package to move this stuff through. Thank you, Commissioner Kay. Uh, is there a second to the, amend to the manager's amendment? A second. Thank you. Having heard a second, we will now move to consideration of the manager's amendment. Each commissioner will now have five minutes to discuss the manager's amendment, and I will begin. I am supportive of many of the projects in this manager's amendment, in particular portable generators, tip overs, infant and toddler strength measurement, e commerce, urgent care centers, and improvements. Uh, and as Commissioner Robin stated, Robinson stated, modernization of saferproducts.gov. These are priority areas for me, and I look forward to seeing the results of this amendment. I also want to take this opportunity to thank staff, uh, both our uh, commission staffs as well as uh, the agency staff for all of the work. Uh, this may not look like a heavy lift, but it was a lot of work for staff to, uh, to get us to this point today. So my sincere appreciation to all who made this possible and to who worked on uh, this mid-year plan. I also just want to comment for the record, late yesterday afternoon we did receive a letter um, from multiple signatures, Will Wallace, Nancy Coles, Rachel Weintraub, Don Huber, Ed Merzinski, and Remington Gregg, uh, asking for particular um, considerations in our mid-year, and I, I think the mid-year plan that we will put forward today addresses their concerns, both in portable tip, uh, excuse me, portable generators as well as the tip over. So, for that, I am very pleased, Commissioner Adler. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you and your staff for uh, sitting down with a with me and my staff and working out what I think is a very thoughtful and very substantive compromise. So I thank you, and I particularly thank your staff. I also want to thank my staff for the my, my staff with Sarah Klein uh, during these negotiations. She did an excellent job. Uh, thank you so much to the commission staff. Uh, you know how much I respect uh, and honor the work you do. Uh, and I think this is a good example of the great work and the great input you've given to us. Um, this was a this was a uh, an agreement that brought goodwill and civility and compromise among all the commissioners. I hope this is something that will uh, continue in spirit for quite some time. So I thank everybody for involved. Thank you, Commissioner Adler. Commissioner Robinson. I only want to thank staff and thank my fellow commissioners. I'm fully supportive of this. Uh, mid-year plan and the priorities that we've placed on it, and I'm delighted that we were able to compromise. Thank you. Commissioner Kay. Thank you, Madam Chair. I plan to support the amendment, and uh, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, I hope that staff can continue to feel encouraged to come up with creative and important safety projects and to give the Commission the benefit of those thoughts going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Having heard no further questions or comments on the manager's amendment, we will now move um, to vote on the amendment. Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Robinson? Aye. Commissioner Kay? Aye. And I vote aye. The uh, yeas are four and the nays are zero. The manager's amendment has been adopted. Are there any other amendments or motions this morning from the dais? Having heard no further amendments or motions, we will now turn to consideration of the FY 2018 mid-year review and proposed operating plan as amended. Each commissioner at the close will have 10 minutes for closing remarks after the conclusion of all votes. But at this time, does anyone else wish to be heard before we vote on the proposed, uh, on the proposal as amended? And I have no commission additional comments. Having heard no further comments, I will now call the vote. Again, this is to adopt the fiscal year 2018 mid-year review and proposed operating plan as amended. Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Robinson? Aye. Commissioner Kay? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes are four, the nays are zero. The fiscal year 2018 mid-year review and proposed operating plan adjustments as amended are now adopted. We will now turn to closing statements. We will have up to 10 minutes uh, per commissioner to begin. 
excuse me, I will begin. Again, thank you to all of the staff uh, for their work in developing this package and for all of your efforts behind the scenes, answering questions, providing support, and helping us work through the document. I believe that the package today is one that represents responsible and transparent stewardship of the American people's tax dollars and greatly enhances our ability to execute our mission of safety. As I mentioned before, um, it's not a perfect package. Uh, there were some items that I wished uh, would have been uh, considered, in particular the end cares. Uh, what's, but um, and and really, that was the most disappointing project that staff identified because it was their number one priority to create and maintain a data collection effort for consumer product use for exposure and risk through the National Consumer Activity for Risk and Exposure Survey, or NCARES. It was prioritized lower on the project list. I thought staff made a strong case for this project being necessary to address some significant data gaps related to consumer exposure to products, and my preference would have been to have it stay on the list. But I do think that the benefits of this final package still outweigh most of my concerns. I'm pleased with the inclusion of work related to saferproducts.gov. As a data-driven agency, we must constantly be looking for reliable and useful data sources, as well as looking to improve the sources and the tools we currently have. One of those sources is saferproducts.gov. With rapid enhancements in technology and applications, every website needs refreshing at some point, and Safer Products after 10 years is no different. Sound science and reliable data is critical to our mission of safety, and I look forward to seeing what staff develops for this important data source in the FY 2019 operating plan. Urgent care is another project I'm interested in as well. I believe the project today included uh, is a little bit underdeveloped, but further understanding the benefits and applications of urgent care or any other data is something for the agency to undertake that I will continue to discuss with our staff. Our NICE data limits us to emergency department incidents. And as the landscape of health care changes and the consumers seek care in less traditional, and I'll put that in quote, locations, the CPSC must be vigilant to track those incidents as well. Other features of the mid-year plan that I wish to highlight are staff's portable generator and tip over work. Both of these projects will be instrumental in staff's voluntary standard as well as mandatory standard work. I'm also hopeful that the infant and toddler strength measurement project will be funded as I believe this work will also inform staff's work on multiple issues including tip overs and durable infant nursery products. I also support staff's continued work on the lithium ion battery and e-commerce. CPSC yesterday held a hearing on the Internet of Things and connected products, and that topic just begins, our IoT hearing just begins to address the evolving technology that will continue to change what products consumers interact with and how they purchase them. Continuing our work on high energy batteries and e-commerce is critical to the mission of the CPSC and puts us in a much better position to track and be aware of emerging hazards. Again, I'd like to thank my colleagues, our staff, and the agency staff for the effort that went into this package. As always, the st success of our CPSC and our agency is because our staff worked so hard, and I'm grateful to them. Thank you. Commissioner Adler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, one of the things I try to do on a fairly regular basis is look at this document that's produced by staff annually, uh, which is a listing of all the projects that have been addressed by the commission, uh, and m many of which have been put on the back burner for year after year after year. There are just dozens and dozens of extraordinarily worthy projects that we have to uh, not address because our funding is so limited. Uh, and so every dollar that we do spend is so precious, and I know that I and all of my commissioners and uh, all my fellow commissioners and the staff worry and agonize, agonize over every project that we actually do because in choosing one, we are not choosing the others, and that is extraordinarily painful. Uh, that said, I think this is an excellent compromise. I think we've done a very good job this year, and I look forward to working uh, in, in future years on uh, op plans and budgets and mid-year review. Thank you, Commissioner Adler. Commissioner Robinson. I um, would just like to say that the NCARS project, um, I think um, Commissioner Adler and his questions probably 
um, pointed out uh, better than better than anyone that this is just a, sort of a it would be nice to know thing. But the idea that we would create a whole new data set when we've only had two exposure surveys, I believe, in the history of the agency, old ATV uh, um, at one and what, one about nursery products, and that we would create a mechanism for this just never made any sense to me, especially uh, uh, given the fact that, as uh, Acting Chair Burkle just pointed out, the urgent care is indeed underdeveloped because we've never spent any effort on that, and I'm delighted we're going to do that. And I have to say that the Safer Products website is something that during my five years here, although um, I, my office has spent an enormous effort trying to improve it, I have seen nothing in terms of the Commission reaching out to medical professionals, to lawyers, um, particularly lawyers who bring lawsuits so they've got experts who are already opining that experts are that that products are dangerous we have none of that going on in terms of trying to reach out so i'm delighted and the idea that it's not mobile friendly in 2018 is um, kind of embarrassing so i'm delighted that we're going to be updating that and i think that those two projects are by far and away much more important than creating a whole new data set that we may use um, somewhere down the road but have no specific use for. Um, and I thank everyone again. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Robinson. Commissioner Kay. Thank you. Again, thank you to our staff for their work on this issue, including those who presented today. And thank you to the Office of the Secretary, as always, Office of the Executive Director and General Counsel. Um, I, I do want to take a moment um, to pay special thanks to a person uh, who is most times behind the scenes. Uh, John McGugan is our audiovisual specialist, and John has been with the agency for about 10 years, so now we're going to ask him to emerge. Probably the system will shut down or sound will go out or something. Um, among many other duties, John is the one who facilitates the live broadcast of CPSC's public meetings such as this. He is the person behind the scenes making sure the video feed works the sound mixes correctly, and operating other many, many other uh, matters. John is retiring in a few weeks. This may be his last public hearing, and I want to take this opportunity, and I know each of my colleagues would like to do that as well, to thank you for your service to, this, to your country and to this agency. Um, and I would ask all of you to please join me in a round of applause for John and show him his appreciation. When we began the process to hire someone for John's uh, spot, John said, make sure it's someone who is willing to do anything and is kind and is gracious in, in accomplishing his projects. And I think that just defines John. He is always willing to help, always there when you need something. I'm sure my colleagues could all share stories and anecdotes about what John has added to our lives and to this agency, and we will really uh, indeed miss him. With that, that concludes this Consumer Product Safety Public Meeting on fiscal year 2018. Thank you very much.